History Talk streams exclusively Thursdays at 10 a.m. on KFYR+. This week on History Talk, Bismarck Mandan Movie Theaters. Most sources say movies were first shown locally in 1907. However, the first reference to moving pictures being shown locally appeared in the Bismarck Tribune on February 22, 1902, when the traveling Beattie brothers presented a moving picture show at the Athenaeum, a stage house erected at 810 Main Avenue in 1883 that was later called the Bajol Theater from about 1909. The Beattie brothers returned in June 1903, using six projectors to present 50,000 moving pictures of, quote, the reproduction of lifelike exhibitions of interest events. Moving pictures, or photoplays as they were often called in the early days, quickly rose in popularity upon their debut. The Spoilers was an early hit locally, perhaps because it was adapted from a novel that was loosely based on local political boss Alexander Mackenzie. The novel was first made into film in 1914, a silent film starring William Farnham. One source says the film earned around $1 million. The Spoilers was adapted into film five times. The 1942 version starring John Wayne is perhaps the best known. Local movie theaters contained a single screen until the 1970s, beginning with Kirkwood Plaza's movie theater becoming North Dakota's first to feature dual screens, and later becoming the first in the state with three screens. Today, Grand Theater, Bismarck Mandan's lone movie house, contains 22 screens. The first Technicolor film was shown in 1928, synchronized audio the following year in 1929, and three-dimensional films were first shown locally in 1953. Both Bismarck and Mandan have boasted numerous movie theaters over the years, some more successful than others. Name and ownership changes were common, some of which operated under the same name. Gem Theater was the first major competitor to the Athenaeum and endured for decades under various names. It first opened on March 3, 1908 at 414 Main Avenue. Gem became Orpheum Theater in 1911 after Arthur Bauer, the theater's manager, purchased it from M.J. Wells. It became the Capitol Theater in or around 1937. The theater adopted the cinema brand sometime in the 1940s or early 1950s sometimes referred to as Capital Cinema. The theater closed at the end of 1980, when the building was condemned alongside the adjacent Patterson Hotel. It reopened as Capital Theater in April 1983, after being renovated into a 1930s-1940s-era movie theater. It closed again in January 1987, only to be purchased by Mid-Continent that May, who reopened it. It exchanged ownership again by January 1988, reopening one month later as Gem Theater, an homage to its original name, before closing a final time in September 1988. Dakota Stage occupied the historic theater soon after, its debut show being A Christmas Carol that December. The original Grand Theater opened in 1909. It was located on Main Avenue inside the Webb Block, today home to Zimmerman's Furniture. It became Bismarck Theater in 1912 and closed in either 1921 or 1922. Another Grand Theater opened in 1913, located at 219 4th Street, in what was known as the Hinckley Building. George Halliday acquired Grand Theater in November 1919 and reopened it after remodeling under the name Rex Theater. Rex Theater was purchased in December 1921, at which time it became Rialto Theater. One source says it closed in 1931, which seems accurate considering there are no more references to it after that year. The building later housed the Knights of Columbus, Roosevelt Bar, and Ref Furniture, today's Conlin's Furniture, before a fire destroyed it on Christmas Day, 1948. The fire was described as the worst fire in three years and took four hours to get under control. Edmund Hughes established Eltinge Theatre in February 1920. One source says it was 1918, but it's likely the building itself was built in 1918 and the theatre was established there in 1920. It was located on the 200 block of 3rd Street, on the site of today's U.S. Bank building. It became Paramount Theatre in August 1929, when it was sold to Publix then a division of Paramount Pictures. It received a major renovation at this time, 
including a new marquee and canopy containing 1,450 electric light bulbs and more than 600 feet of neon lighting. Paramount Theater was noted to show the first talkie locally in 1929, a comedy film called Fast Company. The film was so popular that a late night showing was added at 11.15 p.m. to accommodate demand. It was the first midnight showing in Bismarck. It became Bismarck Theater in 1937, a name formerly used by Bismarck's original Grand Theater. It received renovations in the 1940s, 1954, and 1962. Bismarck Theater closed after its final screening of A Boy Named Charlie Brown on August 31, 1970. The building was demolished in March 1977 for today's U.S. Bank building. Dakota Theater opened in October 1951 on the northeast corner of 4th Street in Rosser. It was a single screen theater until incorporating a second screen in 1975 when it became known as Dakota Twin. Owner Mid-Continent Theaters closed it in 1994 upon expanding its Gateway Mall Theater to eight screens. The building was raised in 2011 for the three-story office building today known as Brevera Bank that now stands on the site. Plaza Twin opened at Kirkwood Plaza in November 1970. The mall was still undergoing construction at the time. It wouldn't officially be dedicated until the following May. Plaza Twin was the state's first multiplex, containing multiple screens. A third screen was added when Kirkwood Mall expanded in 1980, becoming the state's first three-screen theater. Plaza 3 closed in 2001. Constructed for $500,000, including equipment, today's Grand Theater opened with two screens in the fall of 1984. Their first movies shown were No Small Affair and Night of the Comet. Opening of the third screen was delayed due to financial concerns. It boasted a glass front and long lobby, with the main entrance on the northeast side. Several wax models of movie stars served as decor, including Charlton Heston as Moses and Burt Lancaster as a pirate. Grand has been expanded many times since, the first of which added three screens in 1994, bringing the total to six. In 2001, it surpassed Gateway's movie theater to become Bismarck's largest, expanding to 10 screens, but it didn't stop there. Today, Grand has 22 screens. Since opening, it has been locally owned by Jerry Breck, who previously owned Man and Showboat in Bismarck's Capitol Theater. Gateway Mall always planned to incorporate a movie theater, but one didn't open there until 1985, six years after the mall first opened. Their first film screened at Gateway Mall were St. Elmo's Fire, Sylvester, and Life Force. Mid-Continent Theaters, the company today known for providing cable and data network services, owned both theaters at Kirkwood and Gateway, in addition to Dakota Twin at the time. In 1994, Mid-Continent expanded Gateway Theater to eight screens for an estimated $500,000 and rebranded it as Midco 8. It was Bismarck's largest and most modern theater at that time. Mid-Continent closed Dakota Twin at that time. Carmike and later AMC acquired Gateway's Theater, which closed in 2020 during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic and never reopened. Palace Theater was an early Mandad movie theater that opened in December 1916, featuring the film The Pawn of Fate. It was located at 106 3rd Avenue Northwest. Harry Hartman and Rex Sanders partnered to open the theater, originally to be known as the Hartman House or Hartman Photoplay, before becoming Palace Theater. The Palace of Sweets was a confectionery store opened alongside the theater in the southwest corner of the building. Frank and John Wettstein, along with several partners, acquired Palace Theater in 1929. Jerry Breck acquired Palace Theater in 1974, along with Mandan Theater, while Breck continued operating Mandan Theater as the showboat cinema. Palace Theater closed above this time, and the building was used as a warehouse in its final years, before being sold in 1976 to First Northwestern National Bank for parking. It was raised in March 1978. Last week, a landmark building in Mandan fell before a wrecking crew. The old Palace Theater building in the 100 block of 3rd Avenue Northwest was torn down to provide additional parking space for a bank. The old theater opened its doors in 1916. In those days, it served not only as a movie theater, but also as a stage for vaudeville acts. During its stay, it was also used for high school productions and local talent shows. And in its later days, its operation was somewhat unique from what we have come to expect from a movie theater. 
After the Mandan Theater opened on Main Street in Mandan, the palace went to a three-day weekend operation. The palace and an adjoining structure, the Palace of Suites, were torn down last Thursday. The Palace of Suites was a candy-type store that operated when the theater was open. Mandan Theater was located at 210 West Main Street. The theater was announced in March 1936. It opened that November, screening Shirley Temple in Poor Little Rich Girl. Jerry Breck acquired Mandan Theater in 1974 and renovated it at a cost of about $100,000, reopening it as Showboat Cinema that November. Space in the adjoining building was later converted to add a smaller second screen, seating 144. Showboat closed in December 1986 after its last screening Christmas Day. The closure came one month after Bismarck's Capital Cinema closed, both of which were owned by Jerry Breck, who had previously established today's Grand Theater in 1985. Breck cited difficulties turning a profit owing to an inability to acquire popular first-run features. Midcontinent acquired both theaters and reopened the former showboat that May as Academy Theater to feature budget subsequent-run films. It closed the following year. The building still stands today, and numerous businesses have occupied it since the theater closed, including other entertainment venues such as Mysteria Theater. As of today, it houses Strawberry Bar. For those who prefer to catch a movie beneath the stars from the comfort of their own car, Corral Theater was Bismarck Mandan's first drive-in theater. The Schultz Brothers of New England established the theater on April 22, 1949, premiering the film Home Stretch. Construction estimates were more than $70,000. The movie screen was 60 feet high, with the picture itself being roughly 42 feet by 31 feet. The 12-acre plot could accommodate 520 vehicles. Initial admission was 50 cents per person. The theater was located on the site now occupied by River City Sports and the neighboring Senex, corner of Rosser Avenue and Bismarck Expressway. At that time, one mile east of Bismarck city limits, Corral Theater closed in fall 1968. Another popular local drive-in theater was the Sundown Drive-In on the Strip, later known as the Starlight. Drive-in movies are a big part of many people's childhood, a time when your parents put you in your pajamas, popped a big bowl of popcorn, and you sat in your car to enjoy a good movie. Now in the 80s, drive-ins have developed an even different atmosphere, a combination of family nights and teenage nights, and part of that is due to an updated product. The major difference is the, the type of pictures we're playing out here. This year, for instance, we've played Flash Dance. We're going to be bringing Staying Alive out here, um, Blue Thunder, uh, Superman 3, and so with those, with that type of product, we, we've developed uh, a, a family clientele again. But it's more than just the atmosphere that has changed in the 80s, it's also the equipment, both sound and projector. Probably what, would, what people would notice when they came out here uh, initially is that there are no speakers or poles uh, out on the lot. Um, what you do is you tune in on your car radio to get the sound track from the particular movie. So although drive-in theaters will continue to upgrade their equipment and products, one thing you can be sure won't change is the mystique. The mystique of sitting in your car under the stars to enjoy the movie of your choice. I invite you to check out my two Bismarck history books. They are available to purchase on Amazon and select local bookstores. Copies are also available at the Bismarck Public Library. Visit BismarckBook.com for more information. That was a look at local movie theaters. Next, we'll talk about Fleck Motors. Is there a local history topic you'd like to be featured? Email HistoryTalk at KFYRTV.com.